outside the box. <coughs> um, our, our next part of the meeting. <laughs> but I can see that anywhere. This is the meat of our Bible study. It's all But if you look at your agenda, you will notice that we uh, want to have a streetcar discussion. And there are some, we're really lucky that we have Joe Remington Love here, um, Robin Hutchison, City Transportation Director, um, Julianne Sabula, who, I don't know her title. Streetcar <laughs> Transit Program Manager. Ah, very important person. Um, uh, Sharon Hari came in. She's the Urban Design Director for the City of South Salt Lake who's building, helping build this right now. Um, so I don't know if you all want to come up, if you want to field questions. Um, I, our, could you explain what you just handed out? I, 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 would, I, I, I would love an explanation of I, what you just I'm handed getting, out. I'm okay. getting there. So um, I passed out a map, and I have a map here. We debated whether or not to do this. This is not the streetcar route. I will be very emphatic. It is simply something that we've kicked around for some time. It's nice to have something in front of my beady little eyes so I can conceptualize it. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple comments that I want to start this discussion with. We have an opportunity to create a legacy that will transcend my being here or you being here. Hopefully they won't tear the tracks up like they did when Trolley Square was there a, a long time ago. They're putting them back. And so um, our discussion this evening is the beginning. Please, please notice on your agenda, and I'm sure that Jill will talk about this, that on April 23rd, a Tuesday evening, the City Council is sponsoring an evening, and they're calling it, interesting name, the Locally Preferred Alternative. Please keep in mind, Daryl's Alternative, okay? <laughs> it doesn't bear any weight. As I mentioned, I like to be able to see stuff. So, we would encourage you to keep your po your comments positive. Uh, don't think about necessarily the little things, but there's great opportunities that will come to us from doing this to connect business er uh, hubs in the city, to connect to connect residential areas, uh, to talk about rec recreation. So if you'll bear with me, I brought a little marker, and I think it's in my, it's in, it's important to keep in mind some of the things that we'd like to focus on. So the streetcar right now that Sharon and South Salt Lake are building is, is down here at the bottom of your map. That's the South Salt Lake streetcar, is that right, Sharon? Well, South, 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 South Salt Lake Sugar House. South Salt Lake Sugar House. And Salt Lake City together. And Salt Lake City together. It's, it's a partnership. Yes. So um, one of the things people, when you talk about running a streetcar in Salt Lake, they get all excited and they go, oh, they're going to turn on all the houses. <laughs> no. If you think about cities such as San Francisco, where I lived for six years, or Portland, where I visit frequently, or New Orleans, where they have streetcars that run through residential areas, there's a big difference in a business district, which would be something like this, with lots of stops, where you would want to encourage business development. That's what Jill Love will talk about, or uh, business development, and then to get sure I do this right, 9th East and 9th South, that area could be developed, or west of Liberty Park, and I don't know. I'm just, I'm just drawing uh, arrows here. The great, the, is it Granary District? Mm -hmm. Something like this. That's business district, but you have residential areas, like across from Liberty Park, that you wouldn't, absolutely wouldn't want to touch. A residential area here that you need a lot of touch. You think about a streetcar going through that, and certainly there need to be mitigation efforts about traffic, noise, parking. All of that are concerns to us as a community council as we have this discussion tonight and others that follow. Those are important points. So, briefly, not a route. Robin started to hyper hyperventilate. <laughs> 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 yeah. you, know, start with Jill. you want to start? And then let Jill. Okay. Go. Jill, the floor is to Jill, to Robin, uh, and questions, please, to others. Jill, thank you. And, and Daryl, that's a really nice summary of where things are. Um, having a local transit system that serve the people that live in Salt Lake City and not just commuter, uh, commuters 
has been a priority for the city for decades. And we have this wonderful federal grant, things are moving on the streetcar um, along 21st South, as Daryl's just outlined. And now we have an opportunity to create that next window of opportunity. Where will it go from here? And so that's a discussion we're having as a city. And I'm just going to quickly outline what we're doing to engage the public, because it's a priority for us to hear from all of you. And so each of the city council members are trying to uh, go to their different community council meetings, let folks know that we're making a decision of, of where we'll head after this. And we want your input at this public hearing and online at um, online city hall. Uh, I'm going to introduce Robin, but um, we're going to be putting up sandwich boards. We're going to have out flyers to let the public know that the discussion's happening. Hopefully, you'll, you'll help me hand out some flyers in your area. Um, we're videotaping tonight <coughs> because we want to put this on Channel 17 so folks know that the discussion's happening and know how where they can go to make comment. So I'm going to turn the time over to Robin. George. Weren't you going to put out? Postcards within a two-block area. That's right. We're mailing along <coughs> two or three different quarters that are being considered within a quarter mile. Um, so that will be a couple thousand postcards or more. So. So Rob is just going to outline what the recommend <laughs> what the recommendation is at this point to the city council from the administration. How's that, Robin? That's great. I actually want to do a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is recognize a really large team of uh, city folks who have been on this project for a long time. And there's there are several of us here tonight because uh, we care very deeply about building streetcars in Salt Lake City. And we care because that's what we're hearing from the city. Two thirds in the last Dan Jones poll citywide said build streetcars. So we care about what we hear, and we're very serious about building streetcars. So it's a large team. We're all very engaged. Uh, Julianne Sabula has been with us for about a year, a little less than a year, and is our streetcar and transit program manager. She was hired to help us really focus on this. Um, DJ Baxter and Ed Butterfield are here also, and we've been skipping over them with the introductions, but it's really important we recognize them because this project, um, it really started with the redevelopment agency in large part because streetcars are about transportation and mobility and very much about community building. And the RDA is in the build business of community building. So it's been a very strong partnership. We work on a daily basis with Sharon, so it's always great to have Sharon here. We're partners, we see each other all the time. We talk, we talk all about streetcars all the time. Um, and David, of course, and council member. Uh, a couple other folks, we've been working with Judy and with Amy for I feel like ages on this, so it's really nice to see all these familiar faces um, as we get started. So I just wanted to do that. There's a big team here. We're all here to help you and to answer your questions. I have a pretty short presentation, and I'm going to tailor it. I'm going to make you a little bit dizzy because I'm going to go back and forth depending on what questions you have, what you want to know more about. And I want to start by asking who was here during the February 2012 meeting when we presented on this topic. New crowd. <laughs> so let me start by saying that we were here in February of 2012 to present a preliminary recommendation for the locally preferred alternative. Locally preferred alternative is like the worst term ever. We really shouldn't use it anymore. But the Federal Transit Administration has beaten it into us over many years that we call the locally preferred alternative. It really is just the, the alternative that you've come to um, after a technical analysis and after a public process, it's really your, your recommended alternative, just another way to say that. Um, I threw this in here while we were all talking um, because you have some graphics around the room that you may have seen that pertain to the phase one streetcar. And I wanted to show you graphically how our phase two study uh, relates to the geography of the phase one study. So what you have on the screen, the dashed line, is what is under construction right now. It's about 60%. 60% constructed. Very exciting. Um, this line will open in 2013. Or, sorry, are we in 2013? Yes, 2013. This year. <laughs> the line's opening December of this March year. Is almost gone. So um, this will be running. This will be running um, by close of this year, and it goes between the track station that's at about Third West and McClellan Street. Um, 
Now, how many of you feel like getting to McClellan Street is getting to Sherman? Sorry. Are we getting it? <laughs> 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 Almost. 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 Uh, it's a strong project. It's going to do great. To McClelland is a great project, but we all know it can be better. Is that the Fairmont swimming pool? Right. Okay. Yep. So we all know it can be better. That is the crux of this study. We have a window of opportunity to make this project better while it's under construction right now. So the RDA began the study, pulled a really big interdisciplinary team together to look at how can we capitalize right now on making this project the absolute best it can be? So it's an extension study. Everything that I'm going to present to you is about that extension piece, how to make our initial investment even better. Uh, so the, you can see the yellow is the focus of study. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, uh, because most of you are new to this, I am going to sort of start in the beginning. Um, this recommendation that has been made by the consulting team is made because it is the result of both a very robust technical process as well as a very robust public process. And those are two critical things that we put together to make a re recommendation. We call this the spaghetti map. This is how we started. We lay out a map and said, do whatever you want, people. This is your meeting. Put the lines all over the place. This was our first meeting, and we said, the sky's the limit. This is what we got back. It was a nightmare to analyze, but we did it. Um, and we eventually, through a technical screening process based on national standards, uh, very state of the practice, some things that are even better than state of the practice, through a, a screening process, we came to a shorter list. As part of that screening process, we took a lot of feedback. We understood what people liked, what they were afraid of, what they saw as opportunities, and we, we melded that into the criteria that we used. And we came up with this list. And then we ran this through uh, another set of, of, of uh, criteria <laughs> that we got even more intense on the, on the public involvement. I'll just, it's a lot of text. It's really, just, it's, this is just to say we had a lot of meetings. And this isn't even all of them. We're working on an even more comprehensive list. This is most of the meetings, but not all. And we heard back from over 200 people during those meetings and through other sources as well. Um, so we feel like we got pretty good input. And for those of us who've been doing this a long time, I mean, this is a lot. This is, people don't like to come to meetings. It's hard to get people to engage and show up and get their feedback. So when we got 200 comments and responses of people showing up, you know, we reached a lot of people. Um, the result of the technical analysis and the public process was um, a recommendation that came in three parts, 2A, 2B, and 2C. 2A, everybody agrees it's got to get to Highland, no doubt. So that's 2A, that's what you see here. This is a short segment uh, that just extends it due east exactly from where it is right now and reaches Highland. 2B, this reaches the Monument Plaza area. And we've been talking about this internally a lot. Does it have to go into the Monument Plaza? Can it go near the Monument Plaza, serve the Monument Plaza, but not go into the plaza? And the answer is we still have a choice on that. This shows a little loop into it, probably because we thought it was really cool at the time, but we, we really have a lot of choice on whether or not it turns into the monument or it continues. What's the Monument Plaza? Sorry, Monument Plaza, you know that, the big, uh, the, uh, I'm with Gerald my love. The big obelisk. Uh, Artist Santa Shack. Santa Shack. Thank you. <laughs> Santa Shack. We'll just call it Santa Shack. Gotcha. And then the third part of the recommendation is continuing along 11th East to 17th South. 2A, 2B, 2C together is the recommended alternative, the recommended alignment, because it showed the highest ridership per mile, so that's a measure of how we say, how's this thing going to do when it opens? Are we going to carry people or not? So the highest ridership per mile um, has uh, serves uh, Sugar House very well. There's a lot of development coming in. I've got a couple of maps that I can show you in a moment. A lot of development is already under construction. You can all see the construction through there. It's coming in now. serves it very well. Um, and uh, it really gave us the most bang for the buck from a technical perspective, cost per mile, riders per mile, um, and service to a college who's supportive and dying to have it and 
very supportive of this particular alignment. Um, so this was really uh, between what we heard from the public, which was a lot of questions about this, but uh, favoring going north in this direction and the technical analysis this is what we have. Um, the next thing I want to show you is that it's, uh, this is the only area we studied in detail during this extension process. We have not studied further than this in detail. But we all have a tendency to want to look at a more broad scale, so we, we put it on a map just to show its relationship to other uh, transit lines in the city and just to give it a little more broad context. And so that's what you're looking at now. So the black line is tracks. And the orange line is the extension piece that we are studying. And you can see where Liberty Park is in the middle. Does that make a little bit more sense to everybody now? What you're looking for? Great. I talked a little bit about development. Streetcars are this great marriage of uh, community building and neighborhood transit service. Uh, and there's a lot of great things happening. Um, the dots are all the cool things that are up and coming, things that are already in the works uh, as far as development and new, new things coming into the Sugar House area. What do they say? Uh, sorry about that. It is impossible to read them. I'll, I'll just point them out. There's some residential development. There's something called the Sugar House Crossing. That's a development. The Reed Village is a development. Greater Furniture, that the big hole right now is a development coming in. The Sugar House Commons, uh, Sprague Library is noted on there. Wilmington Gardens is a development that will be coming in very shortly. There's some uh, some discussion of development at the Sugar House Shopping Center. So these are just all the points of where the redevelopment and the development's occurring, along with a few other things like, like Sprague Library. Um, how many of you have, yes. Do you have rights to the Nine South Cutoff? What? The other railroad uh, track that was abandoned? He's thinking ahead. <laughs> Do we have rights to the 9 South? Can I get back to you on that? Sure. Uh, can we talk after? And sure. you can show me on a map or to me and I'll look it up. Sure. Ed knows. UTA does. UTA does. UTA does. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. He's jumped ahead. Here we go. That's okay. I'm going right. down to right. Lebanese to 9 South, okay. take a left out to the Peace Garden, and that's it. So who's, uh, who's written this, who's written this streetcar? Wow. Where? Tell me where. San Francisco. San Francisco. Chicago. San Francisco. Portland. New Orleans. New Orleans. This is a good group. This yeah. group, yeah. Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, I have a lot of slides in here about what streetcars are and what they aren't, what things we're talking about, what we're not. But this, I can go quickly because you know what I'm talking about already. Is it electric overhead? Yes. Portland. Seattle. Portland, look at this one's really nice. There's a nice plaza area, community gathering. Uh, station, the next slide. Uh, station area, it's just a bulb out and curb. Yes? Isn't the streetcar going to be essentially a tracks? No. No. With uh, special wheels for streetcar? Uh, well, let me explain what's going on with that. We, um, yeah. we have a, a Tiger Grant for the phase one streetcar. Um, and we were, and I say this proudly, very lucky to have UTA's assistance in allowing us to use uh, what's called the Siemens S70. Siemens manufactures the S70 and they market it to both the light rail community as well as the streetcar community. And I think it's Atlanta that's buying them for their streetcars. Atlanta's buying the S70 for their streetcar. Um, and we're really lucky that UTA is allowing us to use a few of their vehicles. Because the cars that you see here, the ones that are being manufactured now, are three years out. They're expensive. They're $4 million, and they're three years away. Um, so we will be, to start with, on the phase one portion of it, using a single S70 vehicle that will look different. I'm told the skirts came in the other day, and they're working on getting the skirts on the vehicle. So that hides the wheels, uh, will make it appear differently. Um, but it's not a it's not a large vehicle. It, it will not feel like the but old streetcar. It's not street a streetcar. It is in some communities. It will be for Atlanta. I think one of the important things that the streetcar runs on the same mm -hmm. track, basically yeah. the car choices. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's that's a it's a really great point to make. Streetcars are about uh, serving neighborhoods. Uh, they're really about serving neighborhoods. They stop frequently. They don't cruise through at high speed. They stop frequently. 
Um, they are uh, slower speed, not fast. Um, they share the roadway with cars. They go the speed limit of the cars. It's subject to the speed limit, just like every vehicle is, because it's moving with all the other vehicles. Um, with creative design, you can be fully multimodal. I've got a great picture uh, coming up where there's a bike right next to a streetcar. Uh, so we're talking about something different than light rail. I often, I'm really glad that you've all seen, many of you have seen streetcar because you have in your mind's eye what it, what it means. In terms of engineering, does that mean you can put it on any street that a car can be on, or does it have still separate requirements that only make certain streets usable for a streetcar on? It's just a track. Yeah, it can go on any street. It doesn't mean we won't have considerations that make some streets more conducive to others. It is on a track. Yes. And so does it require a its, its own station protected? No. Location? location? We all are quite partial to this picture because it, it helps to show you how a station might work. Now we have not designed this. Know that we haven't designed this. Phase one is really different. It's in its own right of way. We get to do a lot of different things because of that. But this, we've got some ideas about how it would work and look, but it's not, it, it has not yet been designed. But we, we were all, the whole team looks it's at this and goes, we like this. But Robin, just, so just to yeah. be clear again, this first phase ha is it on a designated track and right away, yeah. but the future phases won't be. That's and it right. was just because we had this opportunity. So future phases will share the road with yes. cars. That's correct. Sing single cars, at least yes. certainly to start with. I, I, I think if we're running streetcars, streetcars are, are single cars. Single There's some cars. places in Europe that are running two together, but it's, it's more the exception. They don't put paint on the ground. They don't put islands on the thing. It's you stop, you get out on the corner just like the bus. I'd like to get out here and they just stop and out you go. There's no um, paint there's on the There's some models that's got a picture of that one. So this is Berlin. This is what you're talking right. about. You just get Survival out. of the I, I'm not positive we're doing it that way. That's the best way. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still looking at our options. In some communities, this is sufficient. In others, you know, they want to have more ADA access and ramps, and we want to be sensitive to that. Can you ask you that? How loud is it here? Because the whole rally thing is here. It's coming from Well, I think you've answered the question already. <laughs> Uh, some old rattly thing on an Eastern European street is going to be louder than a Siemens S70. Rattle, I mean, I'm <laughs> uh, I've ridden those Budapest streetcars, and they're not only scary but also very loud. I almost got run over by them. They don't stop. No. Uh, streetcars are generally quieter in large part because they're moving slower and their braking distance is shorter. Um, it's mostly noise is is often more about operations than it is about the vehicles, how fast it's going. And, we have ribbon rail now. It's all one track. Those are the old jointed rails, so like clickety click. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we have all ribbon rail. You don't hear them anymore. These are these are great great questions. What else? What other questions? Are you going to take parking off the street on open feast? No, we might have to reduce a space or two around a couple spaces around the stations. But if we go back, oh look, uh, right here, this picture has parking. You can see parking. If I remember right from riding Portland's, there are several places that you park on the inside. And it's kind of interesting when you get in your car, you pay a little bit of attention to not opening <laughs> your door. But in full disclosure, I'm betting that they moved that they removed a space or two right by the station. Renee. Oh, I'm sorry that I so there's a few, like stage two, lots of stages in two, it only gets us to 17. But we're just asking about tonight, so what stage is that? Uh, I'm very glad you asked that. Um, a later one. And <laughs> one that we want to determine after we've done some additional study on a network. So where I introduce this as um, we we want to make the best investment possible for Sugar House right now. It's under construction, and we want to uh, think very carefully about the extension, and that's immediate. Uh, but at the same time, and Julianne is leading this with uh, help from a lot of others, 
Um, we are gearing up for a larger citywide network plan, and we haven't started it yet, but we're starting very soon because we want to answer some of these future questions uh, by looking at um, the broader network, which will include looking at origins and destinations and where people want to be and what neighborhoods we want to serve. Are we, are we committed to two A, B, and C, or just A and B, or all three, or none of the above? I mean, what, so what, where are we? The recommendation has been made. The recommendation is for two A, B, and C. Okay. And we feel like that is the strongest way to extend. Um, but there, there are chunks, A and B. There's a public hearing, so that's, that's where we are. There's still um, a way to voice your opinion about A, B, and C, all of the above, none of the above, and that public hearing is... Can I just stop? It's uh -huh. the 23rd, but it's 23rd. DJ, do we mm -hmm. have some funding for 2A? Is that where we are? Is that safe mm -hmm. to say? 2A and B? Uh, probably wouldn't extend that far yet. So 2A. The money so right now where we are financially is we have some ideas. We have, we have some yeah. ideas how we're going to get it to Hyatt. Okay. Cool. Thanks, so we, we have ideas on how we're going to get it. <laughs> funding, I mean, funding guys. We have ideas, but. Yeah, yeah. Okay, back to your question. There, there are two um, inputs that, that you haven't touched yet. You, you may actually touch them yet. Um, okay. still. One has to do with the unique nature of Salt Lake City as having the grid system. Yes. And also the grid in combination with a previous trolley system that seemed to serve some needs at some point and then died off. Um, and obviously, the needs are dependent on the demographics of the ridership. What do you guys know about current and future riderships? Uh, I mean, who is going to be riding this in a meaningful way? Can you use it if you're 14 years old and you live in one of those residential areas mm -hmm. to get to school? Can you use it because your job is actually going to be somewhere on this route without having to zigzag three extra miles to get there? And these things do get stuck in rush hour traffic uh, mm -hmm. since they are in, in the street. Um, what, what have you done to know who is going to use it? Maybe it's just going to be that tagger gang or the graffiti artist uh, or, the, or the bird or that comes into my neighborhood and then jumps back on that thing. And, no, I, I, I'm serious. I, mean, I, I want to know the specifics of the, of the demographics. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, so this, Julian, this is now posted, correct? It is. So this is a very long and as Fascinating reading. Technical report of the of the full alternatives analysis, and included in the alternatives analysis was a projection of ridership. And the way that was done is looked at and compared other cities that had streetcars and what the characteristics, what characteristics had the most influence on their streetcar ridership, and compared it to what we have, and then projected riders from that. Um, and I'm looking up the exact numbers of ridership projected, but it it includes. Inherently, it includes demographics. And, and the other inherent thing that I think is sort of dictated by geography is the unique nature of the city. None of the other cities that I was picturing when you were saying you know, these are the ones we're comparing to mm -hmm. have this sort of grid thing. And, and the nowadays, Tim Hartz of Salt Lake City would probably have a lot of ideas of how people move north, south, east, west, when, at what time. Do we have any kind of map that's that superimposes the, the general movement of people now and projected into the future? Yeah, so um, this will be a surprise for some of you who haven't seen this stuff yet, so just roll with it. Roll. Okay. Uh, we have recently prepared and just rolled it out for the first time today at our kickoff meeting for this uh, bicycle pedestrian master plan update. And we have prepared using the household travel survey. Does anyone participate in household travel survey? Uh, yeah. So we use the household travel survey to look at those general um, travel patterns through the city. Where are people traveling to and from? What's the strongest? And we have a designer line map now that shows that those lines are very thick through here and very thin through here. Um, we also have some information about mode share, mode split, and not only about where people are traveling, but by what mode. Where is it highest for bicycles or for walking? Um, and where I'm really happy that we we're, we're mapping that now, and that will be uh, one of the primary inputs into a network study that we're doing. Where, where does that fall? Do people want to go from the Sugar House yeah. Plaza up to 9th South? Mm -hmm. There's a really big line there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the east side is like all big, thick lines. It's, it's a massive, thick line. Uh, question. I don't remember um, paying a fare when I rode the Denver one. Are you collecting fares for riders? That's a policy decision that we not landed on yet. I will say for sure there will be a fare on the phase one. Well, that'll be easy to collect. But if you're jumping on and off the track, yeah, it's a good question. Portland, Portland system, they've got a pretty big free fare zone. I, we we need more discussion. Isn't it just that. like getting on a bus? You have your transfer. It's all part of the same system, isn't it? Yeah. It should work seamlessly like that, but I we haven't made some of those decisions about fares and. So, so this is a city-run system, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Actually, UTA is going to be running uh, the phase one streetcar. I think in all likelihood, they'll, they'll run an extension of this too. Uh, that's not to say that we won't explore opportunities for the city to take more leadership and responsibility that's as we're looking so. at network. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really important to note, it's not as if the city just is building this and handing it over to UTA to then do with what they may and their programming and cut or add as they want. There's some very thick, uh, blindingly thick documents that are in local <laughs> agreements with UTA about um, how decisions are made uh, in terms of things like fares and subsidies and hours. And uh, believe me, your city is not um, deeding this over to UTA by any stretch. Thank you. There's a lot of concern, quite honestly, in the neighborhood about rezoning, mm -hmm. uh, about affecting residential locations. I think 9th to 13th on 11th East, if you were to go that way, mm -hmm. is there, there's, there is significant concern. Okay. Uh, so I, I wondered if you would maybe address that because I think me personally, I believe that if you make everything the same along the, along the right of way, you're just you'll have we'll have a failure. What it needs to be is a, the variety of Salt Lake needs to be fed into this into this transportation system. And then the other thing I want to ask about is what what ultimately could we expect in terms of uh, increased or better air quality as a result of making short trips and uh, recreational trips without starting in the summer. All right, so you've got three questions, zoning, residential, and better air quality. On the zoning, the analysis was completed assuming no change in zoning. So the ridership that we projected is based on what is there now, not some change in zoning. We haven't worked with zoning changes in this study. We're, we're going on uh, what's the next best thing given what we got right now and uh, that, that pointed to 11th East based on the retails and the multifamily that's there. Um, so that's your first question. There's no proposal for any zoning changes associated with this stuff. Uh, the second question was about the residential areas between 13th South and 9th, 9th South. Nine South. Um, and you know, we heard that from the public process. I think we were pretty, pretty clearly that there were some concerns um, along that stretch, and I would say we uh, listened very carefully to that. It's recorded, and as we look at a network plan, we have that information. That is the concern there, uh, zoning right now, which isn't residential, that uh, the street cars would force it towards more business. Is that, is that what the concern is? Well, that, I, that, that's been expressed. Okay. Um, but from 9th to 13th on 11th East, is it? is really a residential neighborhood. And it, frankly, as a regi residential neighborhood, I think would actually draw ridership rather than creating another extent or an extension of the 11th East commercial corridor, because then you push the resident in further away from the. So I'm concerned about seven story apartment buildings. I'm concerned about multifamily. I'm concerned about additional three stories, making a, making a, making a, ca a canyon out of 11th East as a result of this transportation corridor suddenly blossoming into uh, into a full-blown change of zoning. Which is, so you were worried about changing low density to high density? 
not so much residential new business. Well, I, I, I'm not even thinking about high density. Not even well, not even seven more. story apartment buildings are high density. That's high density. If you ever go to New Orleans and ride the St. Charles line, it runs through business districts like here and here, and it runs through residential districts where they didn't they didn't allow any changes to housing, and it's absolutely gorgeous and neighbors love it. It's a, it's an asset sure. to the neighborhood, and so I think that's one of the concerns that that you you, 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 you guys love to yeah I guess I have the point and uh, mm -hmm. there's no proposals for going to do this we well, won't see that anymore. Sorry, there is in South Salt Lake. Because there's places that there actually are non, there's nothing now. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, true of Sugar House Tips, like where the nothing is being happy, but that was rezoned before. And then we have some areas that are living in demolition. So there are spot areas, but one thing, a whole thing is not changing in the residential neighborhood. Well, that's on the phase one, but on the phase two. Right, on phase one. That's I just want to make sure you understand. On phase one, there are and changes. The design. difference is you have a lot of facts of homes and stuff. We're, we're talking about street frontage, existing exactly. houses. I, mean, I, I would like to make a point here, though, and that is that we have not done a detailed analysis beyond 17 houses. And we need to. The next step that we take on this will be guided by a network study that considers some of the points that you raised and some of the fears. There are options north. We've got choices to make and we'll need to study those choices. With the, this study, you won't see any anything really in great detail beyond 17th South. So we love hearing this stuff because we're gonna keep going on planning for streetcars and we're definitely taking feedback on how you feel about your neighborhoods because that's the input. Doesn't a successful streetcar require a destination? And there's real, really no destination on 11th East. Wouldn't it make more sense to go to Sugar House Park? Then you, hit, you don't impact any single family home zones. You don't impact uh, small business with, with the construction. And you actually encourage high density development on the Shopco block. And you get a streetcar to the best destination in this area. Uh, good questions, and we've had these before. And yes. I won't forget a bear and call me, just so you know, just throw um, Okay, <coughs> so Sugar House Park, there's a lot of questions about Sugar House Park. What we see in transit ridership, what we see from other cities, is that parks are not a predictable generator of transit ridership, and especially street ridership. It's unpredictable. Um, and we don't think the park is going to generate a tremendous amount of riders. Some, yes. Not as strong as some other areas. The shot go block. We think there are going to be a lot of riders generated at the shop club block. We do. But we also think that we've got it. We touch it. The streetcar touches that shop club block. Uh, I think that uh, the consultants did some, they held GPSs and they did some walk times from um, place to place on those couple of blocks. And it was like a three minute walk from the center of the shop club block to where the proposed streetcar station is. Uh, a lot of people would be most would be real happy with that. We have a letter of support from them on the, the current, on the two-way, to be on most of the recommendations, um, thinking they, they're, they're excited about it. So hope I answered your question. Robin, how long would it take to walk from that station under the new uh, Sugar House draw to the park? Well, since the draw didn't, doesn't exist, we didn't walk that one, but I would anticipate just a couple minutes. Five minutes from Island to 13. Something like that, yeah. Since yeah. we're talking about all things, all things, sure. all things anywhere, it's a it's a pretend we love it, and and I live on Seventh East, just up the street, and I can tell you that gosh, there's lots and lots of people who obviously want to go somewhere on Seventh East because you know lanes and lanes are full, <laughs> and yet and State Street is the same, and yet we never do. We quit doing public transportation on these streets. I cannot walk out of my house. I could go down to 9th South. I can ride clear over to twenty to 3rd West and 21st South or whatever, maybe 9th uh, West or whatever it is. Take a street. You can't go directly downtown from where I live. Now, don't we find that just a little bit silly? Yes. <laughs> I, I find this just a little bit silly. I used to live on 3rd Avenue. I've lived up here all my life. And you could hop on a bus and you could go downtown. So, I mean, this is all great and it goes all over. And I guess if I want to take a tour of the city, but that's great. 
But if I want to go downtown, and which I do often in my ball gown to the latest Democratic dinner with my husband, we have to take the car because I'm not going to wear my tennis shoes to walk four blocks to get to a tracks line. So that's hey, all I'm so saying. I hear you. <laughs> I do. I really do. I hear you. Uh, we started thinking last year when we were talking about a network study, we were saying it's a streetcar network study. We were going to do a streetcar network study. But now we're saying it's got to be a transit network. Okay. It's got to be more than just streetcars because we need to understand as a city, what do we need to ask UTA for? Right. What, what connections do we need them to do better for us? And we need to define that for ourselves so that we can better uh, discuss with the markets. But, but my perception is that even with what we have right now, UTA is performing in terms of integrating different modes of transportation is pretty dismal. In that there is no reasonable connection between the existing bus lines and the track system. If you take the bus up 9th East and you go to the 9th uh, East Fort South track station, there's no coordination between those yeah. two systems at all. So the, the, the history so far makes us actually very skeptical that UTA is capable, despite their very high salaries and benefits, Tell us how you feel. So they're, they've been, they're, really, uh, they're really important partners for us. Um, they do, uh, they are great at a lot of things, and we want to help them do better in Salt Lake City. Mary, I just want to add, this is this is a real priority for the City Council. Yeah. In fact, we have like four areas, and under transportation, the number one thing we want to look at is how do we make these connections, and do we need to do something locally, and who are our other transit partners, like the school district or like the university, mm -hmm. that can connect neighborhoods to the business nodes and connect neighborhoods to tracks. And so we hope that that's something that you look at in your transit Absolutely. study. It's something we've yes. asked. We've explored the idea as a council of even putting something on the ballot at some point, asking residents if they want a local transit system. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it may, it may be down the road, but it is, we're asking the questions, we're doing the research, we're trying to find partners, and we hope it's a part of the study that comes back to us. Uh, I'm glad to hear that with this huge a daytime population in Salt Lake City has, which we all know, and the disgusting air that we all had to breathe this last year because we have zero control over the number of cars coming into the city, that anything we can do that gets people on public transportation mm -hmm. is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Can I That's answer the cents. air quality and then I'll come back? Is, okay. um, is anyone familiar with the Wasatch Choice for 2040 Regional Transit? Yeah. <laughs> um, I know you already know it. Um, uh, there's a pr uh, compilation of projects region wide, and it's tested for air quality benefits as one of the measures. Um, this project, this streetcar project, is included in that long range plan. Actually, it's in phase one of the long range plan. Phase two, phase one? Uh, 2A, 2B, phase one, 2C, and phase two or three. So it's included on the regional plan as an important project as an overall approach to um, improving transportation, improving how we relate transportation and land use so that we have better outcomes for air quality. That's the best thing for And back, we have one more question over here. I just wanted to throw out something in terms of the, the whole process and how the studies are done. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think one of the sort of most uh, slippery kinds of aspects of trying to make this thing meaningful is that it's a chicken egg question. If you have transportation, people will use it, and if you if they use it, you'll build the transportation. But but it, but in some ways, as and since I think ETA seems to be pretty unwieldy and has a track record of being really unsuccessful, I mean that I really think that needs to be said in, in this context. Would it be possible that through the process that you are doing? Uh, there would be a study phase that would put in place a UTA competing uh, pseudo streetcar that runs like a bus <laughs> that actually can, for several months or even a year period, explore the various options and see how how it affects ridership to then pick the best one to dig up the street and put the rails in. 
Uh, it's a really great idea, and I know we talked about it a little bit when we were talking about the downtown, but I'm not sure we're doing it, but it's a great idea. Thank you for the reinforcement. We, we should look at doing something like that as we're, as we're planning for And doing it with the marketing thing, not just to, to uh, get input from the communities, but also to basically artificially increase your ridership and see whether it's, it's sustainable. I mean, the first week or two, everyone is going to be rah, 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 but then if it's not practical, they won't do it. Two part question. Following on what he just said, uh, it does make sense to get rid of the monopoly on mass transit with UTA. That way you can have shuttles and jitneys and all sorts of wonderful better things and they actually have to compete. But with respect to shuttles, I thought that Westminster is discussing a shuttle to go from their main campus to their adjunct campus on 21st South. So doesn't that remove a lot of the potential ridership on the streetcar? My expansion? understanding is they, they may do that, uh, but they're extremely supportive of the streetcar because it would, yes. it would then they wouldn't have to do that. And shuttling back and forth between those two is different from getting from the campus to your home and back. You're getting into the network, uh, the, you know, the transit network through the streetcar. Um, I'm concerned about the impact on the major residences or small businesses that are on 11th East between 21st South and 17th South. A lot of small businesses, mm -hmm. but you have to close the street for at least a couple of weeks as you go along and construct this thing. Mm -hmm. They won't be able to survive. It's been a challenge everywhere where they build streetcars. Um, we are very, very lucky to have a property ombudsman, uh, Phil Knowles, many of you know him, and he really takes care of our of our businesses, and uh, when it's time to construct, we will take as good a care of our businesses as we possibly can. Uh, in the case of Portland, the story goes that they asked uh, Mike Powell from Powell's Books to take a vacation, and we, when he got back, the street park's in. <laughs> uh, so it can be done very quickly. We haven't determined construction methods. We're still just making decisions now, um, but uh, we would aim to do it very, very quickly with as little impact as possible and with someone who's really caring for the businesses. It's a, it's a yeah, that's happened successfully, I mean, for, for Sugar House in particular, you know, building track across 7th East, you know, was a huge concern uh, closing that, and they, they did it in a weekend, a long weekend. So yeah, but 9th East took one week. 9th East, the little section, mm -hmm. yeah. 70 feet, took a week. Because they didn't close the road. They did close the road. And it's a station area, and we're installing a signal, and that one yes. is a little more complex. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so we talked a lot about how what it'll look like. Let's talk about when it'll be done. About what? When it'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What are some projected dates? I mean, are we talking in my lifetime here? So, <laughs> you, uh, I'll give you, I, there's one date I can give you, okay. and that is that phase one will be finished in December of this year. Right. But we're, so we know about 2A okay. and what's planned, and 2B, what do you think of date wise? Are they 2015, 2017, 2020? I mean, I'm not looking to get a sign of blood here. I'm just, you know, what are the estimates? Yeah, um, I don't have, I, I, I can tell you that um, we get this question a lot. It's very difficult to answer because we don't have secure funding for the entire thing. Right. So we, we, gotta, we gotta think about that. Right, right now, we don't have, um, Approval from a city council. We we have there are there are things that we have to work through that um, will help us to define the timeline. So I can tell you what we hope. That's fine. Reason. Um, I would hope that somewhere in the next twelve months we are at Highland. Help me out here back there if I'm getting this wrong. I'm not. I'll get some stuff to it's just out of my head now. <laughs> um, in a year, we're at Highland. In a year, maybe we're in or near the Monument Plaza. And in three to five, we're at 17 South. How about that, guys? Is that like about? Yeah, that's uh, so the yeah, same year as Highland and, and the Monument? I think, that's, I think that is reasonable from my experience over the last five years with the, with the uh, the first phase. Yeah. I will say, 
the sooner there's a locally preferred alternative or the recommended route is confirmed and approved by the council, the sooner this will happen. And if you wait for various phases, you're pushing out, if you wait for approval of those alternative lines, you're pushing out that time frame. That's just the nature of the beast. So and I just, some people are asking this, why are you making this decision ahead of the citywide circulation plan? And that's the reason, because we don't know where there might be a federal grant opportunity. We don't know, and we want to be ready with that next phase. We want the decision made. We want to be shovel ready so that when the opportunity is there, we can take that next, next extension. The plan that Robin's talking about, the citywide, could be a year or more than a year before it ever gets to us. So we want to have that next decision ready to go. Uh, I so, absolutely agree. Okay. Great. Great. Okay, so is, <laughs> is phase A from 21 South to Track Station up to the liquor store in a closed loop? Uh, on the 9 South <laughs> cutoff, is that what it is? Let me go back sure. a little bit and we can look at the, the maps. The liquor store at the gym. <laughs> okay, so 2A. So one is what's being built right now. 2A just gets to Highland Drive. It's the old VI building. Okay, great reference. And, and that, and that's and that's it's just one track, how do you turn it around? It's a bi-directional train. The, the oh, driver walks to the other end and drives the end. So and we have one passes. streetcar that goes back and forth, is that how we'll we do it? We have two streetcars and they pass in the middle. Really nice. Okay. Great. And when will that be up and running? 2013, this year. Excellent. December. You're on. Okay. <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask from the other end, you know, this one we're sort of doing piecemeal, starting from where we are right now. Has anyone looked at it from the other end where we want to be 100 years from now? And where that, you know, when we, when we get up to 9 South, and I, I know I'm, I'm sort of push, pushing all limits, but, but that's where my concern earlier came in from with historically, we used, I mean, this, this was planned in a, in a pretty cool way. There were, there were tracks going in all directions and you could get everywhere. Uh, where where do we want to go from there, and and that determines to some extent which alternative might be more attractive now. Uh, uh, okay, so first part of that question is we are very interested in putting all of those important corridors, those important connections we want to make into a plan and on a map, and that is starting now. But the second part about um, about uh, a, a, a network plan for determining or helping along this decision. This is an important decision now. And we've done a really more detailed work on this than we will on the whole network plan. So we are really confident that this is the right step forward at this point. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, what is the cost on each of the sections? Going to Highland, uh, the possibility of going to Sugar House Park, going to uh, 21st South, and going to 17 south. Okay, so Which, what is the cost for each section? 3.4, 12.1. Yeah, but it, it's in there. Yeah. But no, the I'm Sugar House, it's, it's going this. to Sugar House Park is not in there. It was never considered. Uh, it was considered as an alternative. But it wasn't, the it cost was, wasn't. The cost was not correct. Do you know what the cost would be? That's what I'm looking for. Well, there's this. Well, the, the 21st out, so the whole thing. Yeah, yeah but that was different. We do, we have cost. I don't know off the top of my head. Exactly. Sounds like we can get it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, sounds like we can get it to you. Look, when are you, again, when are you anticipating that you'll have a network plan? 18. That we could, that we could look, that we would, that would just be an overlay of this, but cover, basically covering Salt Lake City. Uh, we're thinking it'll take about 18 months. We really are in the very first stages. We haven't completed the work. We're still working with team members and yeah. council members on it. So I'm thinking around 18 months, but I, I, I want to be really clear that this project that we're proposing, it's a really good project um, and it's really important, especially for uh, extending what we have right now. And I just want to say comment. We want your comments. If you if you like this and you, you want it, comment. If you have concerns and you want us to hear those concerns, comment. We want to hear from you. So, thanks. Jill 
pays attention to her rear emails. <laughs> Better she, than my phone calls. <laughs> so. She pays attention to Open City Hall. Um, make your make your desires and concerns and visions are known yeah, to our city council. We listen. That's the nice part about this. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I'm your neighbor. <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right here. So, nice to see you. You'll see her out walking. Just a minute. As we, I'm not closing it off, but there's a couple of last things we need to do. I want to mention that Judy Short and Amy Berry are from the, raise your hands so if you know, um, they are from the Sugar House Community Council and they came uh, to join us tonight. And I also live in Emerson. For and she almost all, also lives in, in West Emerson or East Emerson? East Emerson. East Emerson. No, West Emerson. West Emerson. So she's a resident of our area as well. So they're a resource. And after the meeting, please take your time to visit with them. Um, Sharon Hardy provided me with several things. I uh, used the back of the board here. I don't remember what meeting it was, uh, was that, I, that, that Michael and I attended. This could have been Highland. This could have been... Uh, Westminster, but one of those dots is mine. <laughs> and this is part and parcel of the process that, that Salt Lake, South Salt Lake um, Sugar House went through to build the line they're building now. They listen, and there's a couple more that, that I, she, she loaned me and I put over here. They show what the, what the line looks like. Um, granted, that's a dedicated rail line. Um, so that ours may be different. But this is what you can expect to see that they respond to. It's a really important point in my mind that, that the powers that be are responsive to our desires. Yes? President the General, um, we'd also like the opportunity maybe next month to come back to the Community Council and present more information about the first phase and the Greenway, which is actually being designed right now, we have much better renderings now of the Greenway. <laughs> and so if there's an opportunity, we'd really like to come back and talk about that project that is now in construction. So. Um, all in favor? Okay. <laughs> Let, let's just count on it. Yeah, we'll do that. That would be fabulous. You have one I just had a, a last question for uh, our, our presenter. Is there a slcgov.com sub-website where all of this Yes. I would be really interested in seeing whatever is public about the transportation studies, the overall development of the network plan. Uh, if any of the input that you experts, in quotes, are, are considering, uh, I think sometimes it's actually more meaningful for uh, the residents to give meaningful input if they also have access to those studies. I'm going to leave you with a card, and I'm going to direct you. When I have your email, I'll direct you to the link information about and Boris we'll add links to the city council page cool. so so we'll coordinate with you can we link to yeah. where those are okay. yeah. the open city hall site would have those links too right I would think so we'll make sure that we're all late <laughs> when is this <laughs> or you can google it hey Jill is it already up on open city hall I didn't get a notice so. This question? No, the yeah, the council yeah. is. Should be. If not, yeah, yeah it is. We're being told yes. Yeah.